to our Wednesday night service. And those online, glad you could join us. Let's stand and we'll uh, open our service in prayer. Praise the Lord for those that have come out tonight. Lord, we thank you for this time together, Lord. We just want to lift up your holy name, Father. Lord, praise you for all your goodness to us, Father. Lord, come for to be regenerated, Father, for the rest of the week. Lord, we thank you for watching over us and keeping us, Father. And we just ask for your blessings on this service, Father. May all glory and honor be to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Put on the garment of praise. So. Put on the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Praise with the spirit and with understanding. Oh, magnify the Lord. Put on the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to
a cleaning agent, <laughs> the blood of Jesus. We can't save ourselves. We couldn't cleanse ourselves, but God provided Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, you may be seated and just keep, I think just because we sit down, it doesn't mean we can't pray, right? <laughs> it's all right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, uh, we have a number of prayer requests. Uh, Jay needs prayer. He's not feeling well. Uh, Chloe, we uh, dropped her off in uh, Cedar Falls, be with her uh, sister for a couple months before she goes off to Japan, and, and uh, she ended up with a, a 102 temperature uh, last night, throwing up this morning. We'll, we'll pray for Chloe. Um, Rhett uh, has an uh, infection in, in both ears. Uh, this is Pat's uh, grand, grandbaby, and we uh, need to pray for Rhett. I was telling her we uh, went to some kind of restaurant, I can't remember what it was, over last week, and they asked for my name, and I, and I said, Brett, well, they, they put down Rhett, and, uh, and so, uh, so I came back, and I was kidding, Chloe and Stacy I said, Rhett, that sounds like a movie star name, <laughs> it's kind of plain with that, so, uh, and uh, Chesney, she is... Uh, uh, one of the kids who is dealing with cancer, 12 years old, and uh, they found a new spot on her brain, and uh, she she needs prayer, and uh, we'll continue to lift her up before the Lord and, and Olivia, that that other young girl. Uh, Sabanda has a test on Monday at 8:30, and then let's see, that's follow-up testing, and so uh, continue to pray for you, Sabanda, and God. God's going to be with you. Amen. And uh, uh, I hadn't, hadn't gotten an update. I knew no when we were uh, out of town. Uh, I'd been in contact with Judy Lauderdale praying for William. And, and so uh, I'm taking it that silence means it's good, right? I, I knew he came home. Okay, we'll continue to, to pray for... I must have hit the music. You can hear it going in the background there. I um, need to pray for Courtney and her family. It looks like things are going well uh, in, in court. God's moving and uh, continue to, to pray for them. And uh, Lori Bauer, um, she is to, I can't read that. So is she undergoing more tests? Oh, she's going to Florida. Okay, so uh, so her uh, her cancer treatments must be going well. Okay, okay. We'll pray for her and continue also to, to pray for Jennifer. She's got a, a few more mop up uh, chemo's they want to do and. and uh, okay. Okay, that's Linda. Do testing, okay. All right. Yeah. Monday, okay. So we'll pray for Sherman and uh, 
Pray that the doctor is uh, not angry with him while he's giving those shots in the back. <laughs> uh, all right. Praise the Lord. Well, let's lift these before the king. Amen. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you because of your blood. Lord Jesus, we can enter confidently, God, into your presence. Lord, we're, right th we're, we're there right now. Lord Jesus, thank you. You, you are as the veil that separated the, the holy of holies from the, the holy place. And, and Lord, it's through you that we come. And Lord, we love you and thank you for laying down your life for us. Lord, giving your blood, Jesus, to atone for our sins. And Lord, we lift up these needs before you, God. Uh, we, we lift up Jay and Chloe before you, Lord. They're not feeling well. And pray, God, your healing touch upon them. Lord, we pray for Rhett. God, that you would touch this uh, boy, and, and Lord, do a miraculous healing in his ears, Lord, and may his parents know that, Jesus, it was you that touched, touched him, and uh, Lord, we lift up Chesney before you and Olivia, and God, uh, thank you, God, it seems good reports for Olivia, but Lord, Chesney, uh, Lord, uh, these are difficult reports, God, she loves you, she loves to be in church, and uh, Lord, we pray that, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to her as her healer. God, we pray for that. Jesus, touch this young girl. Lord, we uh, thank you for Safanda. Lord, what a blessing she is and, and all that you have done for her. And God, we're asking that as she goes for these tests, things, Lord, this, this test, everything would go well. God, that you would bless her. God, we uh, lift up Denny, Lord. He's, uh, he's been uh, having tests and pray for good results for him also. Lord, uh, we lift up uh, Courtney and her family. Thank you, God, that, that you love families, God. You love marriages. And, and Lord, thank you that you're moving, you're helping, and just continue to work, God. You know everything that needs to be done. Lord, we pray, God, that you'll continue to move on their behalf and give them victory. Lord, thank you that you're working in their lives, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up Lori uh, Bauer before you. Pray that you would Give her a good trip to Florida and that you would just help her, refresh her. Lord, reveal yourself to her, God, in a, in a new and, and, and special way, Lord. God, thank you that you're helping her with this, uh, these uh, cancer treatments. Lord, for Jennifer, Lord, bless our sister. And God, encourage her and Joe. Strengthen her in her body. Bless her and help her, Lord. Father, we lift up William before you. Thank you, God. You've uh, seen him through the worst of it. And, God, we just pray that you continue to bless him and heal him and strengthen him, grant him many more years of health, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, uh, we thank you for uh, uh, Beverly's sister, Linda, and uh, God, you know the test that she's going to be undergoing, and Lord, she's looking to you as her healer, and, and God, you told us in your word that, that you are the God that heals us, and Lord, we pray that God, whatever needs to be done in her body, that you would touch her. Father, we thank you for Sherman, and, and uh, Lord, uh, God, he has had back issues for, issues for years, and you've helped him, and uh, Lord, we ask that, God, that you'll, you'll uh, give him grace, that you'll remove the pain, that you'll grant him many more years, Lord, of uh, being active and healthy for your glory, and uh, Lord, and for his enjoyment. God, we pray for that, Lord. Bless him. And God, uh, whatever other needs are represented here, God, thank you that we can just put them in your hands. Lord, we trust you. We love you. We give you praise. Thank you, God, that you are for us and not against us. Lord, your word says if you did not spear your only son but delivered him up for us all, how much more along with him will you freely give us all things? And so we thank you, Lord, for meeting our needs. God, we love you. We give you praise. Continue, Lord, to minister to those who are grieving, Lord, the, the absence of, of loved ones. Lord, I was thinking about that today, Lord, driving to church. And Lord, they're, they, they're no longer sitting around our table, but Lord, they're sitting around your table. And uh, Lord, thank you that there's a, there's a chair, there's an open spot for each of us. And one day, Lord, we're going to be reunited Lord, but bless and encourage and comfort, uh, Lord, your people here who are grieving. God, we thank you. Thank you for who you are. You're a good father. You're a wonderful Lord. You're a precious helper, Holy Spirit. We are so indebted to you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, bless our friends who are watching online. Lord, may they feel your presence and touch today. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, Jimmy, can I ask you, uh, do me a favor, if you can get in the sound booth and, and press pause on the, uh, the, the CD player or just turn it off or whatever, or unplug it, whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> Don't you, didn't you hear music in the background? in the background. I just turned it off. That'll work. Thank you. All right. Well, let's uh, continue to worship the Lord and our giving, and uh, what a blessing it is to give. It really is. And so uh, I guess now y'all got to stand back up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you, God. You you uh, adopt us into your family. It's a, it's a gift. And then, Lord, you invite us to partnership with you, Lord, in your kingdom and uh, in building, Lord, and reaching people on this earth. And so, Lord, uh, we thank you for giving 100% to us, and we give back to you and say thank you, Lord, for meeting our needs. And, uh, Lord, multiply this and use it for your glory in Metropolis. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for your prayers as, as we were uh, gone for a week on vacation and, and uh, God gave us good uh, traveling weather and, and uh, it's a good time with our kids and so praise the Lord. <laughs> so uh, I was telling Sherman, a dog Javi though, instead of uh, putting, putting him in a kennel, uh, there's a uh, website, I probably shouldn't mention it because uh, then everyone else will be using it and maybe we won't get our dog in next time. <laughs> it's this uh, website called Rover and uh, basically it's, uh, it's people and they're vetted and everything. Yeah, that's a pun. Anyway, they're vetted and uh, they, uh, they'll watch the dog in your home, in their home, your dog in their home. And so this lady, wants, she's got a one-year-old lab and wanted a playmate for her dog. And so uh, we, we met with her and the dog and, and they got along fine. So now our dog, he's usually got lots of energy. So we took him for a walk yesterday and, and Monday and he's just trudging along. <laughs> His spring has done sprung. And uh, that, he's three years old, but he's walking around like he's a 10 year old and uh, just got the energy run out of him. So, <laughs> so uh, but anyway, uh, thank you for your prayers, and, and uh, it's good to be back. Praise the Lord. Well, um, I'm going to, uh, the, the message that, uh, that I'm going to be preaching this evening, it's out of a familiar passage of scripture, but it's not going to be a message that you would think would be out of this passage of scripture. And so just, uh, just hang on. And uh, so let me read the passage, and then I have, um, let's see, I may have put a blank. Yep, I did. Whoops. Okay, leave it there. All right. Um, this is Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through 40, and I'm reading out of the uh, Christian Standard Bible. <clears throat> so just listen along, and, and like I said, the message is going to be different than, than what you would have thought. <clears throat> then they sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When he, meaning Jesus, got out on land, a demon-possessed man from the town met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes and did not stay in a house, but in the tombs. 
When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and said in a loud voice, What do you have to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was guarded, bound by chains and shackles, he would snap the restraints and be driven by the demon into deserted places. What is your name, Jesus asked him. Legion, he said, because many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to banish them to the abyss. A large herd of pigs was there feeding on the hillside. The demons begged him to permit them to enter the pigs, and he gave them permission. The demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the men who tended them saw what had happened, they ran off and reported it in the town and in the countryside. Then the people went out to see what had happened. They came to Jesus and found the man the demons had departed from, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Meanwhile, the eyewitnesses reported to them how the demon-possessed man was delivered. Then all the people of the Gerasene region asked him to leave because they were gripped by great fear. So getting into the boat, he returned. In other words, he went back to Galilee. The man from whom the demons had departed begged him earnestly to be with him, but he sent him away and said, Go back to your home and tell all that God has done for you. And he went off pro proclaiming uh, throughout the town how much Jesus had done for him. When Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Let's pray. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for your word tonight. And, and uh, Lord, I pray that, uh, Holy Spirit, we would be teachable. I pray, Lord, that you would give us a, um, an ear to hear and a heart to listen and to learn. And uh, Lord, I, I pray for your anointing, Holy Spirit, tonight upon me as I teach, preach your word and and uh, Lord, upon us here and online as, as we listen. And uh, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. So uh, the first verse I want to look at is um, verse 37. The, oh, it went back, didn't it? Just wanted us to give some more. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Then all the people of the Gerasene region asked him to leave them because they were gripped by great fear. So getting in the boat, he returned. The people asked Jesus to leave. And you know what we don't read? We don't read Jesus debating them. We don't see him trying to reason with them why he should stay and maybe try to do something else to alleviate their fears. He, he leaves. They didn't want him there, and so he left. And... Uh, However, um, Jesus, he, uh, he slyly, <laughs> because he loves these people so much, he had to leave. But what he did is he told the man who was just delivered, who wanted to go with him. He said, you know what? Basically, the Lord's thinking, they want me to leave, but you stay. And you tell them everything the Lord has done for you. And uh, isn't that awesome how much Jesus loves people? You know, even when people reject him, you know, and, and God will leave. You know, if, if somebody doesn't want him in their life, he'll leave. He'll leave. Not because he wants to, but, you know, but he still loves them. And it's awesome that he put this man to work. And we can read later in the Gospels that Jesus comes back to this area and it's a good reception. And, uh, and so, um, praise the Lord, even when our loved ones turn the Lord away and tell Jesus to leave, God still works because he loves people. And then, verse 40, when Jesus returns to Galilee, look at what it says. When Jesus returned, okay, so he goes back across the lake from where he came, back to Galilee. When Jesus returned, the the crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. 
Isn't that awesome? Okay, so you might, maybe it's like, don't get it, Pastor. <laughs> what are you getting at here? It's in, they, they were expecting Jesus to come back. They were expecting Jesus to return, and so they welcomed him. And so how important it is for us to expect Jesus that he's coming back here next Sunday. He's coming back here next Wednesday. He's going to be here. He is going to show up when you spend time with him in your daily devotions. And if, you, if we will expect him, we'll be able to welcome him because he is going to show up. Isn't that awesome? Jesus is coming back next Sunday. <laughs> we need to expect him to be there. Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, um, sometimes... Sometimes the Lord seems like he did go away. Just like those people in Galilee, they were enjoying Jesus, healing grandmas, grandpas, raising children from the dead, multiplying bread, do all, doing all kinds of things. And then they saw him go off in a boat. And, uh, and if I'm remembering right, I think, let's see, is Galilee six miles across? I'm thinking it's six miles across or three, but I think it's six. So anyway, so it's like, he's gone. <laughs> Jesus is gone. He's not here anymore. And sometimes it seems like the Lord just kind of left, right? And, um, and, and, and if you notice in the Bible, whenever God puts his people in that place, it it's really ends up being a test. Okay, look what happened to the Israelites at Mount Sinai. They had, I mean, they saw the Lord absolutely trump Egypt. You know, they, God, God spoke to them from a mountain. It's trembling. They're hearing his audible voice. Moses goes up on the mountain and then, you know, Crickets at night, birds chirping in the day. You know, it's like there's nothing for 40 days. And so it didn't sit well with the Israelites. Well, um, it doesn't sit well with us today. And it really is a big test. Um, we want to hear his voice, but everything's silent. We desire the guidance of the Holy Spirit, but everything's still. Right? We desire his presence, but his touch is absent. You know, and, and, and it's like sometimes it does feel like our prayers just <laughs> hit the ceiling. Right? Well, what do we do during those times? Because sometimes it's not just a day. Sometimes it drags on for a week. Sometimes it drags on for a month. What do you do? Well, did God, is God all suddenly unfaithful? Did he forget about us? Are we in some deep, dark sin and he's angry with us? Well, you know what? What do we do? We stick with the word. <laughs> That's what we do. Jesus is our creator, our redeemer, our Lord, our teacher. We love him, and so we want to live according to his teachings. Amen? Praise the Lord. We love him, and we want to please him. That's what the Christian life is all about. So even when all is still... He seems to be gone. We're committed to the Lord, right? We made a commitment to Jesus, and we're going to live for him and follow his teachings no matter what. So what are his teachings? Well, read the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> That's pretty black and white or red and white, depending on what Bible you have. Um, read the directions he has given us through the apostles. Love, forgive, live right, be pure, be honest. Right? We do those things because we love him. We don't do those things to be a good Christian. If we're doing those things to be a good Christian, we're, you know, we're living for the wrong reasons. We do it because we love Jesus. We follow our Lord's teachings because we love him and we want to make him happy. And we know that he said he's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. Our Heavenly Father, he took an oath. And I always get a chuckle out of this reading Hebrews chapter 6. Because there's no one higher than God to swear by. Okay, people take oaths in God's name. Well, God had to swear by himself. <laughs> that Jesus was going to be our high priest forever in the, quarter, in the order of Melchizedek. In other words, 
He's our anchor. I like your, your uh, Safanda, your, the bulletin board out there. The Lord is our anchor for our soul, firm and secure. It goes be, beyond the curtain in the inner sanctuary. So we're safe. We're secure. And the Bible says that he is able to save completely or to the uttermost those who come to God through him because Jesus ever lives to intercede for us. He's got us. And so whether we feel Jesus or not, whether, you know, like the people of Galilee, Jesus went off on a boat. But you know what? They knew he's coming back. They knew he was coming back and they were expecting and, and they welcomed him. And so even when you feel like you're all alone and you can't feel his presence, you can't hear his voice, you still live for him. You live by the book. You live by the book. Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to read another portion of scripture. This is Luke chapter 7, verses 36 and 50. And this is all going to make sense together. I'm reading three different portions of scripture. Okay, this is Luke 7, 36 and following. Then one of the Pharisees invited him, meaning Jesus, to eat with him. He entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And a woman in the town who was a sinner found out that Jesus was reclining uh, at the table in the Pharisee's house. She brought an alabaster jar of perfume. Now, this isn't Mary Magdalene, okay? This is a different woman. And stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to wash his feet with her tears. She wiped his feet with her hair, kissing them and anointing them with perfume. When the Pharisee who had invited him uh, saw this, he said to himself, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him. She is a sinner. Jesus replied to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. He said, say it, teacher. A creditor had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. Since they could not pay it back, he graciously forgave them both. So which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one he forgave more. You have judged correctly, he told him. Turning to the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she, uh, but she with her tears has washed my feet and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she hasn't stopped kissing my feet since I came. You didn't anoint my head with olive oil, but she has anointed my feet with perfume. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. That's why she loved much. But the one who is forgiven little loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Those who were at table with him began to say among themselves, who is this man who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You know, um, forgiveness of sin is relative. It uh, really depends on how much a person really believes how much a sinner they are. <laughs> Isn't that right? Uh, both, both this Pharisee named Simon and this uh, woman who is known to be a very bad sinner in town were both on their way to hell without Jesus. Right? Both in the same boat. Simon received Jesus but in, in varying ways, but not both saw the gravity of their sinful life. The Pharisee thought, well, I'm not so bad. I'd like Jesus to be in my house, but I'm not so bad. And this lady, you know, I was thinking about why, why, was, she, why was she crying? I think she was crying because I think she was repenting of her sins. She felt so bad. I think she was crying because she knew Jesus loved her so much and has had accepted her, received her, in spite of how sinful she was. And, you know, regardless of our background, oh, that we would all wonder at the love of Jesus. You know, because that's the only way we're going to serve him. When we really get a grip on how much Jesus loves you and I. He loves me. You know, just, you know, think about that. You know, Jesus loves you know, say this to yourself, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. 
he, that he would take my sin upon himself and go to a, to, and bear, bear my cross. He would be cut off so that I could be adopted into, the, into God's family and he, live eternally. You know, like that song says, oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. <laughs> Say, oh, <laughs> that my brain's not picking up the rest of the words. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. And then I want to turn to Isaiah chapter 1. I'm going to actually have this in the slide. Ah, it must have jumped. Oh, sinful nation, people weighed down with iniquity, brood of evildoers. This is Isaiah chapter 1. Depraved, depraved children. They have abandoned the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned their backs on him. Wow. So we've been reading of people, okay, saying, Jesus, go away from me. We've been reading of people waiting expectantly for the Lord. We've been reading about people receiving Jesus to varying degrees. But here in Isaiah, we're reading about God's children despising him, turning their backs on him. And, and yet, this is what the, oh wait, and then it goes on. The Lord says, why do you want more beatings? Why do you keep on rebelling? The whole head is hurt and the whole heart is sick. God's like, why do you keep running from me? Why do you despise me? Look at your life. You're miserable. You're being beat up. You're, you're, you're sick. Why do you do that? And the Lord says this, oh, I'm sorry, it goes on. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, no spot is uninjured. Wounds, welts, and festering sores, not cleansed, bandaged, or soothed with oil. And then he says this to them, wash and make yourself clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, or come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, another translation says. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you resist or rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. And so here, Again, God's love, even though the people who knew him, they decide, you know, we're going we're gonna to put God behind our back. You know, we don't want to have nothing to do with you, God. We don't want you anymore. We don't like you. And their life is, their life is now miserable. They're suffering. And God is saying, even, even, even then, God is saying, I want you to come back. I want you to come back. Oh, how God loves people. And, and maybe, maybe here tonight, you know, you can think of people that you knew who served the Lord and now their, their life is a mess. You know, their life is a mess. And, and God's not, not standing there saying, well, you know, you deserve it. You made your bed. Now you got to lie in it. The Lord's like, no, come back. Come back. I want, I want to wash you. Be willing to, to get rid of the evil, get, you know, get rid of the sin in your life. Be willing to turn your back on that instead of me. And I'm going to cleanse you. I'm going to wash you. And the, again, the love of the Lord, the love of the Lord. We can reject the Lord. We can tell him to leave or we can expectantly welcome him. We can. And uh, but uh, you know what? We can even be full of demons like the man was that, that man, uh, uh, the Gadarenes, and if we will come to him, he will, re he, he will receive us, he will deliver us, he will cleanse us. You know, um, 
it's no wonder, get, now going back to the, the, the first passage of scripture, it's no wonder that Satan is called by Jesus Beelzebub, which means Lord of the Flies. Let's see, whoops. Lord of the Flies. <laughs> um, demons are unclean spirits. In, uh, uh, sometimes in the Bible, it'll, it'll call them a, a demonic spirit, but in the Greek, it's unclean. They are unclean spirits. They dwell in unclean places. They don't like clean places. Jesus was going to cast them out of the, the man. And so where do they want to go? Into unclean animals. Okay? And um, when, I, when I was uh, first reading the Bible, I was a teen, and I came across that passage, and I said, boy, the, that wasn't very nice, little Lord. <laughs> That was a whole herd of those farmer's pigs. <laughs> and there they went overboard. <laughs> Wiped them all out. Well, then I, then I learned they weren't supposed to have those pigs. They were unclean animals. Unclean. But see, the demons dwell in unclean places. And you know what? They, they still dwell in unclean places. They're in the bars. They're in the clubs. They're in the drug and alcohol parties. They're in the immorality. They're in the gossip. They're in the bad movies. Demonic spirits dwell there. And um, they do. You know, um, there was a time where, okay, you know, when there used to be uh, video stores, <laughs> not so much anymore. And you know what? I'm, I kid you not. And, and it was just the... the, the um, I believe the, the gift of discerning of spirits. If I were to walk into a video store with my eyes closed, I, I am confident I would be able to walk over to, the, to where the bad movies are and pick them out. Because there is just, there, you could feel a demonic presence there. I remember um, this uh, time I, a friend had invited me to, uh, uh, to the NHRA uh, drag strip nationals in Joliet. And uh, so, and you know, they always, where there's cars, there's guys, and where there's guys, they're trying to sell stuff with girls, right? That's just how it is. And so they had these Marlboro, Marlboro girls walking around. And, uh, and so the, the, first, the first girl, like we ended up passing by, you know, she just looked like, you know, a pretty college girl and, you know, with the cigarettes and all that stuff. And then this other girl walked by and it was like, man, you could, there was a demonic spirit there of, of lust. And uh, I was just like, whoa. And um, demonic spirits go where, th where they wanna be where it's unclean. And when people dabble in the unclean, they can, they can pick up unclean spirits in their lives. Now, this doesn't mean that, that Christians need to be, oh, fearful, don't go there, you know? It's like, no, we got Jesus. Greater is he who's in us than he who's in the world. You know, we could go anywhere and not worry about a demonic spirit jumping on our head, okay? But if you start playing with that stuff, you start messing with that stuff, you can invite, what's that? Oh yeah, it's an um, <laughs> it's poop. <laughs> Flies on poop. When uh, when Josiah was in boot camp, and uh, and then anyway, this this uh, silly thing came to mind, and so I drew it. I drew it on a piece of paper, took a picture of it, and sent it. No, no, I mailed it to him. That's right, because he couldn't. He didn't have a cell phone, and uh, so I mailed it to him. He was in boot camp, and uh, and I I drew this little cartoon of uh, some duty, and. Uh, and I had this fly, and he had an army helmet on. He was holding the gun, and then, and then, and you know, and I put steamy marks above the. Anyway, so the flies on the poop, and I put on duty. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. All right, there you go. <laughs> like Dr. Bone, I, the guy was in his right profession. And, uh, but as Christians, honestly, you know, if, if Christians go places where they should not go because they're messing around, 
even, I'm telling you, if, if you watch things you shouldn't be watching, you could invite a spirit of fear. You can invite all kinds of things to hop on board. And uh, Chris, uh, demons go where, where it's unclean. And so, um, again, we don't, we don't need to worry as Christians. But, um, but, you know, how did this guy get so full of demons? What in the world was this guy up to? There were so many demons in this guy, they just said, hey, we'll just call ourselves Legion. And a Legion was a thousand uh, soldiers in a unit. That was a Legion. And this guy was chock full of demons. I mean, what in the world was he into? You know, I don't know if he got into the pagan religions over, over there. He got whatever he was doing, he was full of demons. And you know what? Those demons did not drive that man to Jesus. Okay? And that's another thing. You know, um, those demons didn't keep that man from coming to Jesus, even though he had a thousand of them in him. And a, a person can be the worst, messed up, incarcerated, or whatever person full of demons. And you know what? They can still get to Jesus. And Jesus will receive that person. And he will deliver them and put them in the right mind and make them whole. Isn't that awesome? Jesus is stronger than any demon. Praise the Lord. And so this message, I, I really, the title of it is Receiving and Rejecting Jesus receiving and rejecting Jesus. We can receive the Lord in any condition of our lives that we're in, or we can reject him in any condition. We can receive or reject him. And um, so in, in conclusion, when Jesus seems like he left your region and he's gone somewhere else, you know what? Just be faithful. You live according to how you know Jesus wants you to live. I'm so grateful for the written word. You just live by the word. And you know what? This is a side note. You look at the armor of God, and, and it's about living right. Living right will protect you. Living right will protect you. You live right. You live how God wants you to live, no matter how you're feeling. If you shoot Jesus away, <laughs> Lord, I don't want you in my life. I want to... I wanna, Sow a few more wild oats. I want to, you know, I don't want you in my life right now. He hasn't given up on you. Isn't that awesome? He's going to devise a way to get you to receive him because he loves you so much. If you've grown up as a Christian and you've ended up despising and rejecting the Lord, you may, may or may not be battered or bruised, but right now God is telling you, return to me. Return to me. A sword is coming. A sword is coming. Just because you grew up in church, just because one day you knelt down and received the Lord, there's a day of reckoning coming, and the Lord wants you to come back to him before it's too late. And, uh, but there's hope. As long as you have breath, there's hope. But the day is coming where we, there will be no more hope. You know, the Lord is faithful. When Jesus returned... The crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Praise the Lord. When you, tomorrow, when you kneel in prayer, or you sit on your sofa and open the Bible, and you have your coffee or tea next to you, and you go to spend time with Jesus, expect him to be there, because he's going to be there, and you're going to be able to welcome him. When you come to church Sunday morning, be expectant. Be expectant. Jesus is going to be here. And you know, with the Lord, all things are possible. He still heals. He still raises the dead. He still brings uh, uh, peace to a troubled soul and, 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 and gets a person's thoughts all ironed out. <laughs> you know, he still does all those things. Be expectant. Be expectant. And, and you will see yourself welcoming the Lord because he's going to be here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, let's, uh, let's pray. Let's, you know, let's all stand up. Let's all stand, and uh, we're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, oh, how you love us. Oh, how you love us. 
Lord, you're, you're not going to, you never barge into a person's life. Lord, if somebody says, Lord, go away, I don't want you. Lord, you leave, you leave. But Lord, even when you're hard, rejected real hard by people who knew you, Lord, you're still saying, come back. I love you. I'll forgive you. I'll clean you up. Lord, even if a person with the worst reputation in town, Lord, when they see how much you love them, Lord, they're going to be like that woman. Lord, just falling at your feet. Lord, wiping, wiping your feet with their tears. Lord, kissing your feet because, Lord, you're so beautiful. You're so wonderful. Your love for us. And Lord, help us, help your people to know that's why we live for you. It's not to be a good Christian. Lord, no, we love you. We, we, wanna, we wanna please you. We wanna make you happy. We don't wanna break your heart. And so Lord, even when you're not around, it feels like, and we know you are still around because you can't lie and you said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, we're gonna do what's pleasing to you. We're not gonna give in to the temptations of the enemy. We're not gonna follow even our old sinful uh, desires. Lord, we're gonna walk in the spirit. We're gonna live right. We're gonna live according to your word because we made a commitment to you. And Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. So God, I just pray tonight, Lord, that you'll bless your people. God, I pray that those who maybe have been going by feelings too much and when, when like the Israelites, oh, God's gone. We gotta, gotta do something ourselves to, to make our life work, make these false idols. Lord, um, strengthen your people and, and, and just give them grace to know, Lord, you, you haven't left them, you're there, you're there. God, for those of us who come to church, um, Lord, every week, Lord, may it not just be rote repetition and the discipline is good, but Lord, may we be expectant. And, and Lord, the Galileans, they were expecting you to return and when you did, they were there to welcome you. And so, Lord, you're going to be with us when we meet again on Sunday, Sunday night. Lord, you're going to be with us, or Sunday morning. Lord, you're going to be with us. And, uh, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, those who have gone away from you, Lord, they've gone into the world, maybe sons, daughters, grandchildren, Lord, siblings. Lord, those in our family, God, they, they've turned away from you. Lord, you are pursuing them. You love them. And we pray, God, that you would break through, that they would see, God, the misery of their lives. Lord, the loneliness of their lives when they really don't have you. And God, that they can come back to you. God, we pray for that. Lord, thank you for our time together, Lord. We love you. We give you praise. Bless your people this evening. In your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for watching online. And, you know, uh, yeah, there is a quick announcement. So this Sunday is Father's Day, right? Yeah. I got it right. Okay. So uh, no church this evening or uh, Sunday evening, but um, Sunday morning. Is, uh, oldest father and youngest father present. And You're going to do that, not me. <laughs> I'm done with that. <laughs> and you're going to explain every bit of that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> all righty. Lord bless you all. Amen.